40 years ago this weekend, New Yorkers were taking a deep breath because the longest manhunt in the city's history was over. The madman who called himself Son of Sam was finally in police custody. He left the trail of six dead and seven wounded. Jay Dow digs into our archives for a look back at the summer of Sam. There were no cell phones to call 911, no Snapchat or Facebook Live or neighborhood surveillance cameras rolling to catch him in the act. And between the analog, pre-digital, pre-high-tech summers of 1976 and 1977, no DNA crime scene samples available to collect, all in the hopes of tracking down the mythical figure then known as the 44 caliber killer, and later as son of Sam. What New Yorkers, specifically women with long, dark hair, did have 40 years ago was a deep fear and a bottle of bleach, a well-justified paranoia that drove so many of them to stay home or head to the hair salon in order to change their look from brunette to blonde in order to avoid the killer's perceived preference. These and other precautions were taken in an attempt to avoid becoming the next victim, ambushed by a sinister killer who snuck up on couples in their parked cars and shot them at point-blank range with a 44 caliber bulldog revolver. You have to be careful. You have to watch where you go now, you know, how late you stay out. And I'm always with somebody, you know. That, uh, you know, I know I'm going to be taken right home or whatever, you know. What about your friends? Are they doing the same thing? Yes. <laughs> Even when they don't have long hair, you know, same thing. It scares you. To make the arrest 40 years ago in the dark ages of police detective work, investigators from New York City and Yonkers relied on old-fashioned legwork and elbow grease, aided by no small amount of luck. One of the many things that was checked out by the detectives were the cars that may have been seen in the area on the night of the homicide, and among the things that were done in this connection were the checking of cars which had received summonses in the area on the night. One such car was, a, was this car, the uh, defendant's car, which had received the summons for a hydrant violation uh, on the night of the homicide. When the detectives went to the vicinity of his apartment house, on a routine check, on one of the many checks, they saw his car, and on exa upon examining it visually from outside, saw the butt of a machine gun sticking out of a gunny sack. They were in the process of getting a search warrant for the car when the defendant came out of the house, entered the car, started the car, and he was arrested for possession of the gun. He made admissions following that. Oh, yeah, it was basic detective legwork, uh, the nitty-gritty work that is not Kojak work. It's uh, what we do to make a case. After Berkowitz's arrest, the public let out a collective sigh of relief. The terror of 1977, the summer of Sam, was over. All told, over the course of a year, Berkowitz, a former Army marksman and auxiliary police officer for the NYPD's 45th Precinct in the Bronx, shot a total of 13 people across the New York metro region. Six of those victims died. I don't believe in capital punishment, but uh, he should definitely be punished for, his, uh, for the crimes he committed. It did not take long before grief morphed into elation over the arrest, and then, once initial rumors spread of Berkowitz's possible insanity defense, that elation turned into raw anger. What do you want to see done with him? I want to see him punished. How? How slow first his eyes should go like he killed Robert's eyes, and then his brain should be picked like a chicken with cancer and let it go through. Slow, slow, very slow. The healing process, the emotional recovery, was even slower. And 40 years later, is still not over for the 13 families who fell victim to the son of Sam. Jay Dow, PIX11 News. Now, David Berkowitz, uh, he did plead guilty to the murders. He was sentenced to six 25-to-life sentences. His appeals for parole, they had been denied. Often, memories fade with the passage of time, but not so easy to forget the summer of 77, particularly for the families of the victims and for those to whom David Berkowitz was a neighbor in Yonkers. Mario Diaz tells us more. Good evening. 
David Berkowitz, 24 years old, a postal worker, walked out of his Yonkers apartment last night, turned the ignition key in his car, and found himself surrounded by police. Well, he said, you got me. Those simple words culminated the most complex manhunt in New York City history. I think the people of our city will feel uh, great relief. The diabolical, violent 12-month rampage that left six dead and a trail of spent bullet shells that crisscrossed the city in its wake was at last over. As shocking as the crimes committed were, so was the location of the collar by detectives. A vehicle in front of an apartment complex at 35 Pine Street in Yonkers. The building David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, called home. It's just an eerie feeling to have looked next door to someone and not have known. Well, it's a frightening feeling, you know, knowing that he was here. That is what residents had to say the day following the arrest. 40 years later, the seven-story complex still stands just as it did in 1977. Apartment 7E, where Berkowitz lived, visible from the back. And although many of the building's residents from that period are gone, there is one family from the neighborhood that still remains, the O'Gormans. Where did you watch the arrest from? Right here. David O'Gorman recalls the night of August 10th, 1977 vividly. He watched it all unfold off the family's front porch. For hours, O'Gorman and a handful of other residents along Pine Street knew detectives had the neighborhood under surveillance. However, they were unclear as to why. They were parked two cars behind him. That's the two that came out to arrest him. There's two up in the building. There was an unmarked car in the corner. There was two more in Glenwood. And this side, there was probably two and the rest of this side of the, the build, uh, road and two more on this side. And then shortly after 10 p.m., Berkowitz was nabbed. Joan O'Gorman, David's 80-year-old mother, says two things stood out following his arrest. I was very relieved that he was caught. But the part that troubles me afterwards, that there were so many curiosity seekers. David O'Gorman says the aftermath was surreal, with the environment resembling a circus. The media came out in droves, more police, you know, interested parties. You know, police would just show up whether they were involved in the case or not. Personally, Joan says she was able to sleep better following the arrest, but not for the reason you might expect. I got phone calls a few times in the probably preceding months before he was caught. And I had gotten a couple of calls saying to me, you have the most beautiful legs on Pine Street. I couldn't believe it. However, following August 10th, 1977. They all stopped when, they, when he was arrested. I never got another one again. As for her son, David, he reflects quite often, every year around this time, about the frequent conversations he and his friends had that summer. And what ultimately was, a missed opportunity right at his doorstep. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to catch this guy for the reward money and he's driving by. It's like, wow, you know, crazy, crazy. Of all the places in all the world, this guy has to live in my neighborhood and, you know, he's gonna be in my life, in my history. History will never change along Pine Street. Only one address. The red brick building that was once 35 Pine Street is now listed as 42 Pine Street, Yonkers, New York. Mario Diaz, Pix11 News. When we return, I'll be joined by a psychologist who will get into the mind of a serial killer.